Welcome to the Marketing Smarts Live Show by Marketing Profs and the Marketing Smarts Podcast, where we dive into B2B news, resources, valuable guest content, and much, much more each and every week. If you're a B2B marketer looking for a place to learn, keep up to date, and have some fun along the way, well, then grab a beverage, a notepad, or at least some style of writing utensil, and welcome to the show. Hello to all my Marketing Smarts Live viewers today. I'm super excited to bring you yet another episode of the Marketing Smarts Live Show. This week's topic is all about mastering the revenue attribution puzzle that many of us face. So if you're ready to get your learn on, buckle up. Let's get ready to rock and roll. I'm your boy, George B. Thomas. If we're meeting for the first time, speaker, trainer, catalyst, and host of this here show, the Marketing Smarts Live Show, as well as the Marketing Smarts Podcast, found on your favorite podcast app. Our guest clips today are brought to you by none other than Tish Millsap. Tish Millsap is the CEO and senior strategist at Revenate Marketing, a consulting firm that shows CMOs and marketing directors how to connect B2B marketing spending directly to revenue. She has over 20 years of experience with a large range of marketing functions, including strategy, demand generation, marketing automation, product marketing, brand messaging, and creative management. Her consulting business focuses on helping traditional marketing organizations become revenue-focused marketing organization by building the processes and infrastructures and skills marketing teams need to drive qualified leads and ultimately business results for their companies. Now, remember, in these clips of Tish Millsap today are pulled from the full Marketing Smarts podcast episode. And if you want to listen to the full interview with Tish Millsap and myself, make sure to tune into the Marketing Smarts podcast. Link to the full show will be in the description below after the live show ends. Actually, it's probably there now, but stick around for the show and then go and check out the full episode. It's a great little teaser for you and additional info, of course, as well. Now, in this episode, again, I'm talking with Tish about mastering the revenue attribution puzzle. In this first clip, I wanted to ask Tish, what are the challenges that most B2B marketers face around this topic of mastering the revenue attribution puzzle? And here is what she had to share. Yeah, it is It is a tough challenge for a lot of organizations. And I think one of the problems out there is that all the vendors out there kind of have their own flavor of cake on this. And so when you're trying to um, ingest information and learn more about attribution modeling, if you're going to the vendor sites and reading their, you know, their content, it's very much about their philosophy. And I like to give... Um, a vendor agnostic view of how to think about attribution methodology and and that's kind of what I'm doing at the upcoming marketing profs event um, because I feel like it's really important for you to to look at things just from what your business needs and your business requires um, but the other sort of tip is is that you probably already have something in your tech stack that does attribution if you have HubSpot if you have Salesforce if you have um, a Power BI or something like that, you already have the tools to do kind of basic uh, attribution models. And that's probably a good place to stay, start. Not everybody needs to spend, you know, between 50 and $100,000 out of the gate to get a tool when you can do some of the basics in-house with what you already have. So that would be my other tip is that, you know, be conscious of what content you're ingesting and who it's coming from. And two, look at your own tech stack and see if there's something you can use that you already have. Do you have the tools to do attribution reporting? And if so, are you? If not, I hope that the list that Tish shared is a resource for you to dig into. I'm curious, what has stopped you from doing attribution reporting in the past? Put that answer or put the answer to that in the chat pane and let us know on X using the hashtag, hashtag MPB2B, and, of course, tag me using at George B. Thomas. We'll get back to Tish Millsap and her thoughts on mastering the revenue attribution puzzle. But first, I have to ask, are you part of the Marketing Profs community? If not, become part of the Marketing Profs community by heading over to mprofs.com forward slash MP today. That's mprofs.com forward slash MP today. Now, it's time for one of my favorite sections in the B2B news, where we talk about breaking B2B news or really important tips we find on the Google News tab related to you and your B2B business. This week, the title is Mastering Revenue Attribution with 
Dream Data's Stefan Hederbrandt. Which marketing strategies truly drive precious sales? As a B2B marketer, you always have this question on your mind. Revenue attribution is an answer you may not have considered. It shows how your potential customers navigate their way to conversion and how each touch point contributes to your bottom line. But where do you start your revenue attribution journey and how should you go about it? To read this article, check out the link. And to read more, check out the link below when the live show is over. Let's get back to Tish Millsap and her Marketing Smarts podcast episode. In this second clip, I wanted to ask Tish, how can B2B marketers get started? How long it takes to get started? And what the heck should we be thinking about along the way? Her advice is golden. So make sure you perk those ears up and take a listen. Well, there are, it certainly can be challenging. A lot of these vendors will say, oh, I can have you up and running in 30 days or something like that. But that is, uh, and that is true. They're not saying something that isn't true, but only if your underlying data is clean. So that is probably the number one thing that I go in and help organizations with is like, okay, how do we um, normalize your data so that when it's ingested by the tool, it makes sense. You know, are you using the same the same kind of campaign methodology? Are you using the same kind of form submissions? Are you, you know, is all this stuff cleaned up and organized in your system? Um, because you know, garbage in, garbage out, and that is probably the, um, you know, the biggest challenge that you have to overcome in order to make these models work. But I want to say the other side of the coin, kind of to your point, George, the the yin and the yang of this. Just as important is how do you get buy-in in in your organization? So um, interestingly, the, the, this last engagement that I worked on, I was brought in by the CFO and I've never been brought in by the CFO. It's always been the VP of marketing or the CMO or whatever. And I was like, Hmm, this is going to be interesting because the CFO is really focused on, uh, you know, how are we spending our money? And what's the ROI on that money? And so he's just been a great advocate in the organization to get the buy-in across the board for how we're doing this attribution work. And so if you're coming in at this from marketing, first thing, you've got to get your sales ops team on board. They have to agree to the methodology. Whatever model you choose, whatever inputs you choose, the sales organization has to be on board or they're never going to believe what it is that the, the model puts out. So I think the buy-in um, is something you cannot underestimate how important that is because, again, you'll implement this fancy tool, you'll do all the hard work, and then nobody believes the reports when they came, once they come out. Do you have a strategy for your attribution reporting needs? Do you have the buy-in that you need? Are you understanding what you and your organization need to know about attribution reporting success? Hey, we'll get back to Tish in a few minutes, but first it's time for some dope B2B learnings from the vault of Marketing Profs articles. That's right, it's time to dig into two. Well, time to dig into the treasure trove of valuable information and pull out two Pieces of gold to help you be a better B2B marketer. Article number one this week is Back to School Marketing Attribution 101 for Lessons by Jeff Zelling. By midsummer, a little voice inside almost every consumer, no matter his or her age, says, Go buy a trapper keeper. Remember those? Get a cool backpack, find a new pencil sharpener, go now, run. Back to school shopping is such an ingrained tradition. One might think it should be an easy win for marketers. Today, however, consumers have far more products from which to choose and marketers have many more channels through which to deliver those messages, their messages. How can a brand be sure that its investment in television, internet, radio, or other media is paying off at the checkout counter? Companies must follow the entire customer path and attribute the sale correctly. Otherwise, marketers can flunk one of the most profitable sales seasons of the year. Article two this year, by the way, you got to go check out the link, read the rest of the article. But article number two this week, how to build out your marketing attribution strategy. And it was a post actually by AdRoll that you can check out. All brands want to tell relevant, engaging stories that create a seamless customer experience. Well, yes, we do. Through digital marketing channels like advertising, email, social media, and more direct-to-consumer 
Brands are competing with the attention and business of their customers. It's more important than ever that they develop a comprehensive understanding of what is working and what is not. Their message needs to be effective and its impact across channels needs to be measured in a holistic way. Too often, the complicated nature of advertising and marketing online results in disconnected data among multiple channels, making it difficult to track the customer journey and understand which channels or marketing activities are influencing the actual buyer behavior. Want to keep learning more? If so, check out the links in the description below after the live show to get access to both amazing marketing profs articles. Okay, back to Tish Millsap. Let's dive back into this conversation of mastering the revenue attribution pu puzzle. In this clip, I wanted to ask, what does attribution reporting success? That's right, the nirvana of attribution reporting look like. Here's what she had to say. Well, I think it kind of comes out in two ways. One is that you are having formal discussions uh, where you are looking at the attribution reports and making decisions on it. So you're like, oh, you know, it looks like SEO is performing really well. Um, let's go ahead and hire that SEO agency who's going to help us improve in that area. Let's uh, invest the money in that. Or, you know, that trade show really didn't deliver any opportunities last year that closed became closed one. Let's not do that trade show again. But the other part of it is an informal basis. So you're in a conversation and people randomly bring up the tool and say, hey, let's look and see how that white paper performed because it was on this specific topic and I'm wondering if we could enhance that or change it or use it again or something like that. Let's see what the attribution to that particular white paper is. And that's when you've really ingrained the attribution tool into your organization when it's being used both formally and informally. Are you making smart decisions based on the data you're reporting on? Are you doing things that contribute to your future success? Are you leveraging formal and informal input questions and data to measure your attribution usage and success? We're going to get some words of wisdom from Tish Millsap here in a few minutes. But right now, it's time to turn the spotlight on you, the marketing profs community. Yep, time for from the hashtag MPB2B community. We searched far and wide in the hashtag MPB2B universe to find amazing information and conversations to bring to you, the masses. So first, make sure you're using the hashtag. Second, make sure you have fun and add value to the community along the way. Then we'll spotlight you or your crew on the show. This week, it's Alec Irvin, kind of. Actually, this is a weird week. There's two humans. Anyway, Alec Irvin, Public Relations and Content Marketing. His post goes a little something like this. I'm so excited to attend hashtag CM World this year. Will I see you in San Diego? Tell me which events you're attending or considering. This year, I can update our post if you have favorites you think should be on there. And to be honest, it was a share of this post from Erica Held a B2B content marketing consultant, fractional head of content marketing, gluten-free blogger that spurred his post. And her post went a little something like this. What hashtag marketing industry events will you attend this year? I've already got my ticket for hashtag CEX and hashtag MP B2B. There's that hashtag. Hashtag MAICON and CM World, hashtag CM World, sorry, are three that I am excited to attend and hopefully speak at this year. Hopefully you do speak at them, but you need to check out the description, click that link, click the links to the links and read the posts and all the things on the socials about you, the community. Marketing Smarts viewers, I have to ask, are you gonna be next to get the spotlight? Remember community, use the hashtag, hashtag MPB2B on Facebook, LinkedIn, or X, and get the light shined on your awesomeness in the next episode or a future episode of the Marketing Smarts Live Show. Pro tip, it won't hurt if you tag me in your post as well. I'm at George B. Thomas on LinkedIn and on X. Okay, let's kick it back to Tish Millsap and some words of wisdom around this topic of mastering your revenue attribution puzzle. Here's what Tish Millsap wanted to leave us with. Are you ready? Yeah, it's pretty good. No. It's real good. 
Let's take a look. Okay. I can't advise on that. Probably not on your life. Um, so I think there are three things that when you're about to go on this journey, there are three things to think about. It's your technical app infrastructure. Is it ready? Do you, you need a readiness assessment before you even look at a tool. Um, what are my business processes that support that technical uh, infrastructure? You know, is everybody creating campaigns in the same way and doing the same kinds of things? Data likes to be uniform. And then the third thing is preparing for that buy-in, having those conversations even before you've gotten a tool because nothing irritates people more for you to say, well, I built this, I, I bought this tool, I implemented it, and here's the report. And you didn't bring them along in the journey. Tell them early on, this is what we're thinking about, get their thoughts up front and make sure you accommodate for that, for what kinds of reports you're gonna develop because that will save you later on the problems with getting buy-in. Mm. Save you the problems of getting buy-in. Anyway, are you thinking about the tech? Are you ready for the tool? Are you thinking about your business processes? And are you thinking about the runway you need to get that internal buy-in? Are you making sure to build the reports that serve your team? That's one of the things that I pulled out of there. Very good words of wisdom in that last section. Have you enjoyed today's journey? Let us know. Use the hashtag, hashtag MPB to be on whatever platform you're joining us on. It's time, ladies and gentlemen, head to the description below. Click on the link to the Full Marketing Smarts podcast with Tish Millsap and keep on learning more about mastering the revenue attribution puzzle. Remember, these are just a few clips of the original Marketing Smarts podcast interview. If you got value from today's show, hit that like and better yet, share it with a friend or co-worker. To keep learning more, hit the subscribe or watch additional Marketing Frost videos on your favorite social channel or head over to our YouTube channel if you're not there yet. Or you can go tune into the original Marketing Smarts podcast episode found where? On your favorite podcast app, of course. Don't forget to become part of the Marketing Frost community by heading over to mprofs.com forward slash MP today. That's mprofs.com forward slash MP today. And always Remember to be a happy, helpful, humble B2B marketing human. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Marketing Smarts Live show next week.